welcome everyone. Welcome families, parents, partners, and friends of the award-winning students, as well as Middlesex's uh, Chief Executive Officer, Kim Hogan, and Academic Dean Donna Bantanabas. We also have with us our former CEO and now Vice President of Academic Affairs at Central Connecticut State University, Dr. Stephen Minkler. And also welcome to the faculty and staff. But most of all, welcome to the winners of the 2022 Academic Awards. I'm Rich Linosi, Professor and Coordinator of Digital Media Production Programs and co-founder of these uh, annual Academic Awards. 17 years ago, I was having lunch with Professor Greg Horn, and we felt what was needed at the college was a way of honoring graduating students who had the most significant academic achievements. We had ceremonies like Scholarship Night and Phi Theta Kappa inductions uh, that honored a few of the students, but not all. Thus, we have this ceremony. You are in an elite club. You're the best and the brightest of Middlesex Community College. You exemplify the values of your college, your community, and those of your family and supporters. Each of you has the highest grade point average in your academic program or discipline. That's impressive. You've been nominated or being honored by the faculty tonight uh, who will present you with your award. I know you have many people you'd like to thank, especially those you brought with you this evening. This is not an evening, though, to be humble. It's an evening to be proud. The person you should be thanking the most is yourself. Pat yourselves on the back. Your perseverance, motivation, drive, intellect, and hard work are what got you here and would lead you to many years of success and many, many more accomplishments. For each of you, whether you're pursuing a career or moving on to an advanced degree at a college or university, this is only the beginning. Let's start the program. I'd like to introduce Pro Professor Susan Lugley to give the first award in accounting. Can everyone hear me? You you know okay, that's right. <laughs> Usually I don't need one. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mirlis for her hard work for the accounting program at Middlesex Community College. She is definitely an outstanding student. Um, she has been our online student, so this is sort of the first time I've ever been able to meet her, which is pretty awesome. Middlesex has a complete online program uh, for business, and um, she's a mom, which makes the online program pretty awesome for moms who work, have children, have a family, young children, and she's exceeded her goals. She's the number one in the class for accounting. Uh, she's going to move on from us to go to Charter Oak to continue her education. So this is excellent. Uh, and that, that this is exactly what you always hope for, especially when you have an online program and you see such success for people who maybe can't come on ground. Um, so it's been really a wonderful, rewarding experience to reach out to you even on in line online during this time of COVID. And um, I want to say congratulations. You are a wonderful example for all of our students. Thank you. Thanks. You want to get a picture? Okay. I just want to make a two shout outs because we had two students in the business program that uh, couldn't make it tonight, and that's Tyler Seifert. I hope you feel good. And um, he is our outstanding student academic award winner for business administration and Grace Cartwright uh, for business studies. So both of those are students that can't be here. Uh, obviously, there are lots of COVID issues out there, but or other issues that people come up with. So um, I just want to say that they are outstanding students too. And so I just want to thank you for giving me time to say that for them. Thank you. 
Professor Donna Hilton will now give the award for Management Information Systems. Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna ask Jennifer to come. <laughs> I told her I have a speech to give about her, but I only have two minutes. As Rich says, my name is Donna Hilton, and it is my pleasure to present this year's MIS Award to Jennifer Wimler, who completed her degree last fall. Jennifer came to Middlesex because she needed a challenge to keep her focused. She started taking business classes with actually no particular direction in mind. After a few semesters, an advisor asked Jennifer what she wanted to do with her education. And after giving it some thought, she, she was convinced that MIS was the right choice because it combined her interest in the technical industry with business management, and she saw that it was the best way to elevate her career. For Jennifer, however, it was, it was challenging having to juggle a full-time job, home life, and school, but after overcoming the initial hurdles um, that she encountered in college, she found a rhythm, that's using her words, that worked for her. Jennifer said, I found that the more I learned, the less I really knew, and the more I wanted to keep learning. Jennifer has found this educational journey to be very rewarding. Her degree has helped her with her full-time job at Electric Boat, and she was able to take on more technical responsibilities and grow within the industry. Jennifer will be continuing her education at Southern New Hampshire University, where she will pursue a BS in information technology with a concentration in project management. She was recently hired at Collins Aerospace in North Carolina. So she will be moving south. Ooh. <laughs> and she plans to continue challenging herself even beyond the classroom by listening to educational podcasts and taking continuing education courses whenever she can. I extend my sincere congratulations to you, Jennifer, and I wish you all the success in the next chapter of your life. My turn. So, Struthers, come on up. This is Zoe Struthers. She is the winner of the Academic Award in Digital Media Production. Zoe is from Middlefield and a graduate of Coggenshog Regional High School. Zoe's always been interested in film and TV production. While she was in high school, she was accepted into prestigious Summer National Leadership Conference at American University, where she specialized in film production and editing. She spent one year at Pace University, but the minute she got there, she felt she wasn't ready for the change of moving from a small rural town to the big city university. Middlesex is in her blood. Zoe's sister went here, as did Zoe's mother, who's a graduate of the Early Childhood Education Program. Her family recommended our program, a big thank you to them. Her boyfriend gave her the confidence to return to school and urged her to come here. She clearly is surrounded by people who love and believe in her. When I first met Zoe at her advising session before she started classes, I could just tell there was something special about her. She's mature, responsible, confident, smart, and passionate about her field and succeeding in it. In her two years at Middlesex, Zoe has earned a 3.96 grade point average and has, yeah, <laughs> and has produced some of the finest and most professional short films and news stories to come out of the program. I'd like to announce here to all of you that before she's even graduated, uh, WFSB Eyewitness News has hired her as a producer. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm very proud to congratulate and present this award to Zoe Strada. And now I'd like to introduce Christine Ruggiero for uh, the award for English. Good evening, everyone. So I just want to start off by saying it's such a gift to be here in person to celebrate our graduate award recipients. And as Rich said, my name is Christine Ruggiero and I'm the English Discipline Coordinator. And on behalf of the English Department, it's my pleasure to present this year's award for academic excellence in English to Andrea Churchill. Andrea, will you come up? So Andrea has been a student at Middlesex on and off since 2004. 2004. I think this level of perseverance sort of deserves another applause, don't you think? I mean, come on. <laughs> so Andrea reminded me that she had me in 2008 for English 102, and I will trust her memory on that better than mine. Um, but I've, I've had the pleasure of getting to know her over the last couple of years, um, working towards her degree, and she started taking more classes during COVID. And she took uh, creative writing with me as well as American literature. Every single time we met to talk about work, it looked like she was going to be overrun or sort of suffocated by all of her books. I mean, if I could give you a picture, piles of books, piles of books, piles of books. And she is absolutely a book lover and a book collector. And she'll graduate uh, in the spring with an associate's degree in English studies. Um, she credits many of her professors in English and otherwise for their help throughout the years, as well as the college as a whole for contributing to her success. Uh, Andrea says that she wouldn't have been able to finish her degree if it weren't for Middlesex and the professors being so helpful. But when I met her mother, her mother said she worked her butt off. And, <laughs> and yes, she absolutely did. Uh, recently inducted into the Middlesex chapter of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, Andrea holds just about a 3.7 GPA, probably higher than that after the semester's grades, and she hopes to graduate magna cum laude. She'll transfer to UConn's Harford campus in the fall, where she'll major in social work, and she'd like to do work in the areas of addiction, homelessness, and she'd like to work with teen girls um, on self-esteem issues. Please help me in congratulating Andrea, our English studies book lover and collector on her 18-year-long accomplishment of completing her degree, receiving this award, and her journey ahead at UConn. Congratulations. There you go. Thank you so much. I'd like to introduce Professor Judith DeGraffenried, who's going to give the award in fine arts. I'd like to call up Helen Cavanaugh. Uh, we both just came from the painting class, so um, we're kind of messy. <laughs> Kate, uh, Helen is uh, a very special student. I've worked with her since the foundation classes, and she's always extremely serious in her work and disciplined. Um, last spring, the art department faced some challenges as some studio courses were pushed online, uh, such as illustration, which involves watercolors and color pencils, uh, painting, uh, figure drawing where you have to work from a model. So a lot of the students kind of fell by the wayside because it's hard to take studio courses online, but Helen did it. She did a beautiful illustrations, beautiful watercolors, beautiful color pencils, and I was actually, the classes there in person, and I was like on Blackboard talking to them on a big screen what to do. So she prevailed. Uh, she also um, did not take painting one because she was going to other schools, but she joined in on painting two and she asked, can I come into painting two? Will you give me a prereq waiver 
And I was like, absolutely. Because painting one is a very difficult class because it's a hard medium, it's like um, boot camp. And usually I wouldn't let somebody take painting two, but I, I knew she could handle it. And she did jump into that class without the advantages the others have. And uh, you can't tell her from her work. Uh, she's doing an amazingly complex painting right now of a her cat looking in a window with rain and everything. And the cat's looking startled and horrified. It's, it's just a brilliant painting with all the fur and the textures and the rain. And she's doing a very complicated cityscape with smoke and people and clouds. And it's just, she always does work of the greatest complexity. Um, I've also seen her graphic design work and digitally, she's right there. She's a fine artist. She's very gifted uh, with traditional techniques, but she's right up there digitally too. Her design work is just amazing. Um, I know she wants to go into either field and we're not quite sure where we're gonna go yet, but I know she's gonna go far. Her hobby is camping. And I'm thinking that fits because she's the kind of girl, she just goes out there, you know, she just dives into everything and she's fearless. So um, I expect great things from Helen and I'd like to give you this award. I'd also like to give a call out to Edward Evans, who couldn't be here. He's getting the degree in um, award in graphic design, and Jenna Busak is getting the award in transfer art studies. They both have amazing GPAs. Hers is three nine something, brother. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to introduce Dr. Victor Trier to give the award in history. I always sit in the back. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble if I sit in the front. Um, Griffin is a 2020 graduate from uh, Valley Regional High School. He started uh, Middlesex right after you graduated high school, right? And he was one of the students that I had when we first came back to campus that first semester after the shutdown, which was something new for all of us. I mean, I was teaching here, right, at this very podium for the first time I'd been almost 30 years I didn't teach in Snow Hall, so it was kind of a special semester, and he took my U.S. History one class and uh, received an A, and then the next semester, spring 2021, he took the U.S. History two honors uh, and the Western Civ two, and got A's in both, and you know, every now and then you get one of these students that when you're reading their essays, their tests, like, oh, this student gets it. It's like almost just absolute perfection. Uh, he did wonderfully. Um, and of course, I didn't had never seen him without a mask until about three weeks ago that uh, he needed to see me. I'm his um, advisor and he was graduating. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to be in the library, meet me. And it's like, <laughs> we're talking, I've never seen you without a mask before. Right. And I think that's happening more and more uh, to um, a lot of us. But, you know, I, I asked him in preparation um, for tonight, you know, uh, you know, what, why is he a history major? And his answer was, I love it. And history was always something I've been fascinated with since I was a young boy. I said, boy, I can totally relate to that because I always tell people I probably would have never graduated from college had it not been for history. So I definitely uh, was able to relate with that. And well, what do you want to do when you graduate? He says, oh, I want to be a teacher, or be a history teacher. I'm like, I can relate to that. I don't think I ever wanted to do anything else in my life. And then when he came to see me that day, um, if you don't mind, I, I, I share the question you had for me. He wanted to make sure, how do they know at Central that I'm coming as a history major? He wanted to make sure. I said, boy, I could really relate to that, right? I want to make sure the people there know and I want to do this. Uh, and, and, and so we found out. But he was, he was a wonderful student, great to have in class, um, you know, just understood everything. And I'm sure he's going to be very successful as a history teacher. Uh, my own son graduated from here. He won an award, you know, several years ago here, and, and he's a teacher now. And and there's just some of us who were made to do that, and I think uh, definitely Griffin is one of them. So congratulations, Griffin. All right. There you go. Oh, wait, we got to take a picture. Professor Ruggiero is going to give the award in liberal uh, the liberal arts and sciences.
It's my pleasure to present this year's award for academic excellence in liberal arts and science to Isabella Merlini. Come on up, Isabella. <laughs> Isabella holds a 4.0 GPA. Woo, yes. <laughs> She is a member of the Honors Program, as well as MXCC Chapter President of Phi Theta Kappa. I have known Isabella since the fall of 2019 when she was a student in my Composition English 101 class. And it was really clear that her critical thinking skills and her writing really transcended sort of that of the norm um, at that level. And so, I think I pretty much recommended her for everything possible. I recommended her to be a tutor at the Academic Success Center um, in English. I recommended her to the Honors Program. I recommended her to be a classroom assistant in some of our English courses where she could help other students who were struggling writers. And um, I have to say, she took it all on. She did all of it. Um, and selfishly, I did schedule her to be my classroom assistant um, to help my students who are struggling writers. And I have to say it was during one of the most dif difficult transitions um, and it was during COVID. We uh, weathered the storm of live online teaching and learning together in the fall of 2020. She's absolutely a, a consummate professional. I was even jealous of her background. I'd be like, Isabella, this is so beautiful. She has this great setup and just so professional and the students really took to her. Um, of course, I tried to recruit her to the English program, uh, but to no avail. She found her passion through the honors seminar and honors capstone courses. And what she really wants to do is to join the FBI and do psychological analysis of crimes. She presented an excerpt of her work at the academic convivium in 2021, and I had the pleasure of hearing that. And in February of this year, she took the initiative to email the forensic linguist who helped solve the Unabomber case, and she conducted an informational interview with him about his work. I, I, isn't that cool? I mean, really cool. Um, anyway, so she's gonna transfer that kind of ambition and um, grow uh, at UConn in the fall where she will major in the psychological sciences. Uh, Isabella says that Middlesex was a great transition from homeschooling and after having taken a year, a gap year, and that the class size enabled her to really find her niche and discover her passion for what she really wants to do in her future. So join me in congratulating Isabella on this award. We're now gonna move on to health careers uh, with Jill, starting with Jill Flanagan uh, with the award for health information management. Hey, it's my pleasure to present the Health Information Management Academic Award to Karen Malloy. Karen, would you come up? So a uh, little bit about Karen. A few years ago, Karen decided that she wanted to make a career change. She was initially unsure of what she wanted to do, but after researching our program offerings, she selected health information. Karen had been out of school for close to 40 years at that point and was not sure about how she would do and decided to start with the certificate. As you can see from the fact that she's receiving an award today, she has done very well. After successfully completing the certificate, Karen saw that it would not take many more credits to earn a degree and decided to go for it. Some of the biggest challenges Karen faced were relearning math, and writing her first paper, since she had not written one since her senior year of high school. Karen worked a full-time job and limited herself to two courses per semester to make sure she had time to study and complete assignments. It took her five years of hard work to earn this degree.
Karen did complete the Health Information Management Certificate in January of 2020 and will graduate in spring 22 with the Associate Degree in Health Information Management. She currently holds the highest GPA of the graduating class at 3.82. Karen, it's my pleasure to present to you the Health Information Management Academic Award. Dr. Arlen Aceto will give the award for ophthalmic design and dispensing. Thank you very much, Appreciate it. And if I could have Haley Presley come on down, you are the next contestant. Um, so, now, first and foremost, congratulations to everybody in this room. Uh, this is just a remarkable group of students and, and academics. Um, I'm, I'm really proud to, to see you all here. Um, I don't have to tell you the last few years has been relatively challenging for everybody. Um, and with the advent of uh, what we've had to deal with with COVID, um, we've had our community, our students, our professors, our uh, administration, we've really adapted and evolved tremendously. Uh, it's been a challenge, but it's been very impressive to watch. And I would say that in our program specifically, um, for some of the health careers, it's such a hands-on and such a transition and the uh, trying to change from one to another. It's been somewhat interesting in our particular place. Plus, I'm a relatively new program coordinator. We had a new full-time uh, instructor. Our program really had uh, a lot of changes, and, and Haley was first and foremost really embracing each of this. She, she rolled with all the challenges. She was uh, first and foremost in the class trying to, to, to adapt as well. And it was really remarkable to see. And she was sort of like a rock throughout that entire transition. And no matter what was thrown at her, she continued to be uh, right, on or right on target. Um, Haley's exemplar, uh, an exemplar of tenacity, hard work, and dedication. It serves as a model for the rest of our students. Uh, Tyler's dedication to the material, uh, improving our skills and knowledges uh, in all aspects of the program. This program's notoriously difficult. We've never had, in my tenure, a 4.0, and she came perilously close with a 393, and it's an unbelievable accomplishment in our group. Um, but she's not just an academic. Uh, she also stepped out outside of her comfort zone just recently because um, she's a little bit more mild-mannered, a little bit more serious, and then she was able to represent us at a national conference in New York City uh, going against members and, and representatives from opt opticianry schools all over the country, and she did an amazing job for us, and it was just really impressive to see all the different things that she's done uh, to represent our school, our program, and our profession here in the eye care. Um, I think that the future of all healthcare, as a lot of our healthcare folks can understand, is going to be, it's constantly evolving and it's always going to change, but I feel that we have, uh, our profession at least, is going to be in great hands with you, Haley, so we appreciate your hard work and we want to say thank you and congratulations on your great accomplishment. Thank you. Professor Judy Wallace will give the award for radiologic technology. Jordan, come up. This is your moment. Let's, let's share it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Judy Wallace, and I'm coordinator of the radiologic technology program, and my friend at Middlesex Hospital, Donna Crum, uh, is the director. Together, we run four medical programs. Um, Jordan is here representing radiologic technology, but we also run mammography, MRI, and uh, computed tomography, which people casually call CAT scan. So we try to meet all your medical imaging needs. As we come together tonight to celebrate academic excellence, it is with great joy that I welcome all of you, family, cherished friends, and award recipients, and most especially, Jordan Randlove, who will be receiving the Radiologic Technology Academic Award. Jordan came to the program a little over two years ago from UConn, and I'm mighty glad she did. We're very happy you came here. Um, she's a self-described nerd with a natural curiosity and quest for intellectual growth. As Abigail Adams once said, learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with ardor and attended to with diligence. 
Jordan personifies this quote, and she is here tonight because of her hard work, perseverance, and commitment to excellence. The Academic Excellence Award in Radiology is conferred on a student whose academic performance during the year, um, during the program, demonstrates remarkable consistency at the highest level of achievement. The intent of the award is to acknowledge and celebrate this student and Jordan's remarkable accomplishment. She has earned a 4.0 GPA through this entire program. And for those of you who may be unfamiliar with that scale, that means that she received all A's throughout the whole program. You do want to see her for x-rays. She's awesome. Um, not only has she made the academic accomplishment, but I'm proud and happy for her to report that she has already gotten a job. She hasn't even graduated yet, and it's a job that she's looking forward to and only 15 minutes from her home, so that's awesome. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient, Mrs. Jo uh, Ms. Jordan Randloff, and let's wish her all the best. Thank you. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you, Professor Wallace. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Lionel uh, Carmo Carmona uh, to give the award in Manufacturing Machine Technology. Good evening. My name is Leonel Carmona, and I am the Discipline Coordinator for Mathematics. Um, <clears throat> it is my honor and privilege to present Mark Young as the Manufacturing Machine Technology Program Award recipient. Uh, Mark uh, shared with me some thoughts, and I want to share those with you as well. Mark initially started attending college back in 2006 with his first uh, Mills' college uh, uh, courses completed 12 years ago in 2010. But Mark has learned over time that establishing one's career path should not be a sprint, it is a marathon. Mark has been incredibly fortunate that he cannot recall a single professor within the manufacturing machine technology program at Middlesex that did not only successfully instruct the course work, but also promoted an environment that correlates to success at the industry level. This last semester in particular has been incredibly, incredibly bit sweeter, and it is Mark's last course in the program. But it also has been the most rewarding, and that is no in no short order due to the Professor Duane, his ability com to convey tra travel knowledge obtained over his 30 plus years in the field and associate the information with the best practices and expectations in today's manufacturing world. Said each and every student that is fortunate enough to enroll in one of his courses for career success. Mark said that with his chapter closing and after being accepted into the program in April of this year, he will be pursuing a bachelor's degree quality management at the University of Minnesota, Crookston, one of the only universities in the nation accredited to quality management. While it, the end goal is still unknown, Mark continued to develop his career and quality engineer at the Lee Company in Westbrook, Connecticut, and facilitate lean manufacturing initiatives within the business. Lastly, Mark wants to acknowledge his fiance, Marilyn, for her support through these few semesters, which have been proven extraordinarily challenging. Since the Dora Lila has, been, <clears throat> has born three years ago. Marlin has endured the bulk of parenting in the evenings while Mark has attended nine classes and added to the already arduous tasks 
of solo parenting. Their daughter received an autism diagnosis at 18 months old and has been <clears throat> exhausting challenging to manage every capacity in, in every capacity of being a toddler. Her diagnosis has also proven a key motivator for Mark to continue his education as Lila's future becomes more and more uncertain. With each misdevelopment stone, milestone, securing the support she will need down the road becomes more paramount than the alley. Amongst the many sleepers and demanding nights for studying, finishing labs and writing reports, where it would have been easy for Mark to settle for a C minus instead the more difficult A. Marilyn and Lila have been Mark's reminder to strive not for nothing more less than an exceptional. Mark, congratulations and being the uh, manufacturing technology machine technology. <laughs> Professor Norma Rosado Javier is going to give three awards. Uh, the first is in uh, early childhood education, and she'll also be giving the Human Services Award and the Social Work Award. All well, three, yeah. I know that. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Norma Rosado Javier, and I'm the program coordinator for the Early Childhood Education Program. It is my pleasure to present the Early Childhood Education Academic Award to Caitlin Gibor. Come on up, Caitlin. Caitlin is a dedicated and conscientious student who takes her education seriously. She arrives to class on time, ready to participate, and engages in college learning. She shows genuine warmth, concern, and respect for her fellow students and can relate to a diverse population. It is evident that Caitlin truly enjoys working with young children. Throughout her student teaching experience, she demonstrated compassion to the children she served and was sensitive to the individual needs. She can provide developmentally appropriate learning opportunities for children and is eager to learn additional teaching practices. She demonstrates a sense of commitment and dedication to the children and families she serves. Caitlin was offered a teaching position in an early childhood center shortly after she began her field observation hours as a student. Obviously, the center staff realized what an asset she is to the teaching profession. Caitlin will graduate spring of 2022 with an associate degree and a certificate in early childhood education. She currently holds the highest GPA of the ECE graduating class, a 3.96. Good luck to you, Caitlin, as you continue your journey in the field of early childhood education. It is my pleasure to present to you the Early Childhood Academic Award. Congratulations. Okay, on behalf of Professor uh, Jennifer Hernandez, I'm going to present the Human Services Academic Award to Joan Barker. Come on up, Joan. Joan started Middlesex Community College in 2019, taking two classes at a time to contribute to her goals. A couple of her favorite classes included public speaking with Professor Simmons, who she felt really stretched her to get up and be brave and speak in front of the class. She also found that she experienced more growth in her group dynamics class and was fascinated watching different personality types working together. 
Of course, like for most of us, COVID changed everything and, co and Joan adjusted by increasing her understanding of technology and making the absolute best of her academic experience. Joan has two classes left this fall and plans to graduate in the spring of 2023. She has enjoyed the Middlesex experience and has told others that share her mature age that it is never too late to learn and be challenged personally and technically and academically. <laughs> Joan continues to work both as a therapeutic recreation director and a massage therapist in her words, as long as her body lets her. Joan, your excitement for learning and energy to live life to the fullest is amazing to witness. We are proud of your work on behalf of the MXCC team and Dr. Hernandez, congratulations. get a lot. <laughs> okay. okay. And the Social Work Academic Award is presented to Tracy Marcelli. Okay. When we asked Tracy to share her experiences here at Middlesex Community College, Tracy reported that her time at Middlesex has been a challenging one. Her experience in trying to navigate the academics and all the new technology while essentially trying to reinvent herself after raising her family was a challenge. Tracy expressed that whether it was lack of opportunity or lack of time, one of her biggest regrets in life was not having received her bachelor's degree. For Tracy, pursuing a degree in social work is where she hopes to find a way to help others the way she was helped when she needed it. Her goals specifically include helping serve those experiencing domestic violence. Tracy will be a strong advocate to help others find their voice. Tracy was very grateful for the support of all her professors, advisors, fellow students, and the IT department, who she says really got to know her on a first name basis. Her gratitude towards them is honest. She says they all made the fish out of water experience a little easier. Tracy also shared that she's so grateful for the love, encouragement, and support of her family, whether in taking over some of my mom duties or helping her study. Their support was endless, and for that, she was grateful. Tracy, on behalf of Middlesex Community College and Dr. Jennifer Hernandez, may you continue to grow and serve in a way that you were intended to. Congratulations. Professor Tad Lincoln is going to give the award in political science. Hi, everybody. I'm Tad Lincoln, uh, and I coordinate the political science program. Uh, I'm pleased to present the political science academic award to Richard Samarawick Rama. Richard took my international relations class his first semester at MXCC, just a couple of months after he came to the US from Sri Lanka. It was easy to see right off the bat that he'd be successful. He had perfect attendance, including never being late, never leaving early, turned everything in on time, always demonstrated fine attention to detail. Not surprisingly, he earned an A in my course, and then in a bunch of other ones, also was recently inducted into Phi Theta Kappa. But more surprisingly, he did that working about 89 hours a week through that first semester. And after that, he reduced his hours to a mere 76 hours a week. A lot of that time at MXCC was working three jobs. Those long hours clearly didn't dent his academic performance or his jovial or polite personality. Well, working all those hours, he managed an overall GPA of 3.83. And at the same time, he was probably the most respectful student I've ever had, always thankful, always addressing me as sir. 
Richie likes many things about MXCC, where he says he has a lot more academic choices than in his home country, and he can be creative here. He said back home, studies were extremely stressful, and quote, all students who excel are expected to be the same, much like robots. In other words, you're expected to be creative, but in the way that your teachers tell you to be. Doesn't make sense, but that's the truth, unquote. Richie also expressed, quote, my teachers at MXCC were a great inspiration and helped me along the way. I could have reached out to them at any time. And the reason I did reach out to them was because they made me feel welcome in approaching them, which was important to me. Richie also found his classes and teachers drew him in. I don't think I would have done so well, quote, I don't think I would have done so well if I wasn't so interested. It helped me get engrossed and focused in my studies. Regarding the future, Richie wants to go to a four-year college where he can play competitive tennis. Other than that, quote, I'm not quite sure where the future will take me, but I definitely know that I will graduate from MXCC with the mindset to always be learning and absorb knowledge wherever I go. It's my pleasure to present to you Richard Samarawik Rama, the Political Science Academic Award. Congratulations, Richard. Dr. Frank Stellabate. Bote will be giving <laughs> three awards, uh, the first one in biochemistry studies, and then in biology and biotechnology. Thank you. Um, so in 2016, a bunch of faculty from all 12 community colleges uh, and the four state universities came together and we made a biochemistry studies degree which is what I majored in, and we thought, if, ever, if I had to suffer that much, why not let other people suffer? Uh, and we put uh, the two worst undergraduate courses you could take in the degree, which are Organic Chemistry I and Organic Chemistry II. Ask your medical doctor if they pass those. Um, and you know, we didn't expect anyone to actually major in it, but we thought we'd make the degree. And to my surprise, the very first uh, biochemistry studies um, um, graduate is here with us tonight. So come on up, uh, Mia. <laughs> so Mia Giacometti was inducted into our chapter of Phi Theta Kappa, and also Epsilon Pi Tau, which is a tech studies honors um, society. Um, I talked to some of uh, her professors, and Mark Busa, who's a physics professor, said that she's an outstanding student of physics. <laughs> he was very serious. Um, and then I talked to Sarah Leone, which is your math professor, and she said that Maya was one of the hardest working students she ever had. Um, and I'm uh, so pleased to say that unlike myself, uh, uh, Maya, uh, uh, Mia has uh, passed organic one and organic two uh, and hasn't had to retake them. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Right. The next um, is a major in liberal arts and sciences and biology, um, Maya Carpentino. <laughs> 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 
So um, Maya is in our um, uh, rigorous honors program, and she recently gave a talk on the value and necessity of parks. Um, her English professor, uh, Christy uh, Pyatt, uh, said the following. She said that Maya is an excellent student, but she is also a humanist who seeks to make the world a better place for others. In addition to earning a spot in the MXCC Honors Program, during the pandemic, Maya works at Masonic Care Chester Village preparing meals and cleaning rooms for elderly residents. That's, that's very admirable. Um, she is on the Student Senate and recently hosted a Middlesex Moments episode, um, and it was a program on female leaders. Um, she was also a legislative intern with Senator Christine Cohen. Um, and recently she was asked if her goals align more with a career in the sciences, I was paying attention, <laughs> the sciences or a career in politics. And she said she was sort of preferring politics, but I hope she does a little bit of both, you know, like an Angela Merkel or something <laughs> like that. You know, because uh, we don't usually elect scientists in the United States. We, we, we tend to, to elect people that are not as intelligent. So, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So now I'd like to call up um, the award recipient in biotechnology, uh, Jacob Goodman. <laughs> so Jake is also in the honors program. Um, and as an honors student, he recently gave two talks at our 2022 academic convivium. One was entitled, the function of monoclonal antibodies within the immune system, which I'm so incredibly proud of his accomplishments, um, most of all because he's in the biotechnology program, and this is a hardcore STEM program, but it also requires you to do an internship. And he applied and, uh, for a competitive internship at a biotechnology company in Meriden, and the CEO of the company uh, um, called me the other day and, and told me what a wonderful job he did working and taking classes at the same time that they're gonna take another uh, student from our biotechnology um, program here at Middlesex. Um, he was also, not only was he inducted into Phi Theta Kappa, the Honor Society. He was also the chapter secretary, and he was recently recognized by Governor Ned Lamont and named to the All Connecticut Academic Team. <laughs> um, his English professor, Susan Landino, writes um, that his essay on Malcolm Gladwell's and Maria Konnikova's theories was the finest essay ever written in her course. Um, Miss Brown called me today. She's your forensic science uh, professor, and she'd like to thank you for your help with DNA extraction. That was very nice of you. Um, he's taken and survived three courses with me, which is very unusual. Uh, <laughs> um, and as we discovered in our molecular biotechniques course last semester, Jake is a big fan of crab rangoon. <laughs> and uh, that was very enjoyable. So um, I'm incredibly proud of Jake. Uh, he's, uh, he was a joy in class and especially in lab. And uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Professor Donna Hilton will give uh, the award for computer information technology. I'm going to ask Gregory to come up at this time. So hello again. Um, it is my honor to present this year's Computer Information Technology Award to Gregory Castelli, who will complete his degree at the end of this spring semester. I'm happy to report that to date, he has an overall GPA of a perfect 4.0. Needless to say, Greg is an extraordinary student and I'm very proud of his accomplishments. Let me tell you a little bit about him. When the COVID um, lockdown started, he thought that it was a good time to go back to school and so he decided to enroll here at Middlesex. Greg chose to major in computer information technology because he needed a career change and this degree would lead him to an IT job. Greg had attended college before, but he said that this time it was different than anything he had ex experienced in the past. He was used to physically being in the classroom, but he had to quickly adjust to the challenge of taking online classes. However, he rose to the occasion and continued to maintain his high marks in all his classes. When asked about how his education has helped him, Greg said, it has helped me get my foot in the door to a help desk job where I can start my career in some kind of IT role. Greg, you see, was hired right at his internship site and he plans to continue working there. He hopes to build his career in IT and then determine what other future paths to pursue. I extend my sincere congratulations to Greg and I wish him all the best in the future. Dr. Lynn Lin is going to give the award in computer science studies. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Lin. Um, I'm professor and program coordinator of engineering, computer science, and the computer technology programs at the college. Um, I'm very pleased to present this year's computer science studies program award to Fahana Yasmin. Fahana has a strong background in math and science subjects. With a GPA of 3.69, she recently joined the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. She did very well in my programming logic class, um, uh, and, and I was very impressed by her creativity and attention to detail in the design and the implementation of her project uh, where she used the JavaFX to draw a dream house with a perfect downwards three-dimensional design. I used her work as an example to show other students how a project should be done. A member of MXCC Math Club, Fahana has been active in campus activities. Prior to coming to the US, Fahana received the best student award from the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. She was placed in the top 50 in her state for the 10th grade board exam among all the students. At MXCC, she has been on Dean's list every semester. Fahana is disciplined, bright, direct, and friendly. She's happy to help other students and instructors. She has applied to several universities for transfer, including Wesleyan, Quinnipiac, and CCSU. She received several offers and decided to go to Quinnipiac University. Fahana wrote, my desire to escape the struggles I have experienced in life motivates me to succeed the most. 
and I have been working hard at pursuing my goal of living a tranquil life. I would like to say to you, Fahana, you have unlimited potential to make a difference in the world with your major in computer science. For example, in information technology, designing security software and hardware, or, de or developing mobile devices, networks, and applications. In manufacturing, using simulations to improve products. In healthcare, exploring the data produced by new DNA sequencing techniques, developing new remote monitoring systems for patients, or designing security and privacy for medical records. In retail, analyzing data to predict trends and improve inventory management. In weather forecasting, developing models that predict the behavior of bad weather, such as hurricanes. In the arts, designing new special effects for movies or composing digital music. In financial services, designing and overseeing automated trading services. Fahana, I hope you reach your full potential. Congratulations on your award. Professor Steve Kravisky will give the award in mathematics. Hi, everyone. As uh, Jose Malesio uh, attempts to slide into home without being tagged out, uh, and by the way, this is not a Red Sox hat, Brooklyn Dodgers. No Red Sox. Sorry. Sorry, Professor Carmona and Evelyn. Um, before we honor Jose for the Math Department Award, I'd like to say that so many of you in this room have helped make um, the math department and the math club in particular a very special year. And we also even started a chess club as well. I wish we could keep all of you. I know people move on to other things, but uh, been a lot of wonderful people in this room who've uh, made this academic year very special for me and I hope for the department as well. Jose uh, put up with me in such fun courses as Calculus 3, Differential Equations. I uh, resist the temptation to give you a problem. Um, though our math club friends over here uh, my, and there would like that. So Jose's written work was very detailed and very thorough, which I happen to like because I read everything and I'm very detail oriented. So Jose put up with my Yankees references, which a lot of you know are uh, extremely frequent as I'm a New Yorker and uh, Mickey Mantle is on my fantasy team as an aside. So uh, Jose really did a great job receiving A's in all of the courses he took with me. He was also to be found in the tutoring center where a lot of us seemed to sort of take over uh, that area last year and we'd be found doing interesting math problems on the board there in the ASC when we weren't tutoring. So Jose, you've been a substantial contributor to the math department. So on behalf of the math department, congratulations on your wonderful efforts and best wishes in the future. And go Yankees, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good work. I think I can speak for the faculty and uh, would like to thank uh, Dr. Donna Bontadabas uh, first for stepping into the role of interim uh, Dean of Academic and Student Affairs and also for organizing this evening for all of you. So give her a round of applause. She's got some recognitions. So.
Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you very much. And good evening, everyone. This is such a special evening tonight, isn't it? We're so proud to be here with our award recipients to truly celebrate their success, especially after the last couple of years and the kinds of challenges that they rose to in order to be here this evening. To our award recipients, I truly hope you take a few minutes out to truly mark this milestone in your life because it's a tremendous one. And if it's any indicator of what's to come, you'll achieve great success in their future and we'll be proud of you when we see that because we're already seeing it now. Tonight, I also want to spend a few minutes recognizing uh, some additional individuals who are here this evening. I would like to, on behalf of our college, recognize them for a few reasons. One, for their service to their college. They have done a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes. Two, for their dedication and motivation. They have worked tirelessly behind the scenes as well to provide the level of activities and programs and structures to help all our students succeed in so many different ways. And lastly, I'd like to recognize them because they're just tremendous colleagues, friends, and have been a part of the Middlesex family for a number of years. Tonight, I first like to recognize Dr. Stephen Minkler. Dr. Minkler, come on up. Dr. Minkler was our Dean, Prezi Dean and CEO. also would like to recognize several individuals who will be retiring this year. It's hard to imagine, but we have a number of retirements from individuals who have done so much for our college and so much for all of you in the room and also for all our students here at the college. I'd like to recognize Professor Donna Hilton. Donna Hilton, come on up. Donna, as you know, is our MIS and CIT program coordinator. I also would like to recognize um, Professor Judy Wallace. She's our radiologic uh, program coordinator. She had to leave early this evening, but we just also wanted to thank her for her tremendous years of service as program coordinator and one of our more popular programs. So thank you, Judy. We're very appreciative of everything. <laughs> Next, I'd like to recognize Professor Leonel Carmona. Professor Carmona is our, our coordinator of mathematics, and we wanted to say a special thank you to him for his years of service to our math department, right? And all of you. Last, we also would like to recognize our tremendous host this evening, Richard Linosi. Richard, thank you so much, Rich, for all the years, nearly 30 years, actually, of tremendous service to our college and really building an, an enormously proud program that we have that's just stellar throughout the state of Connecticut, our new media program. We wanted to say a special thank you. As you were also, as you said earlier, one of the original host and formulas of this evening tonight. So thank you, Rich. We're very proud. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce our CEO, uh, Kim Hogan, who is going to offer a special congratulations to all of you this evening and also provide some conclusion. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Rich, for your hosting tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at what I consider to be one of the prime nights of our academic year, the Academic Award Night. To quote Dolly Parton, why would we not quote Dolly Parton, right? Um, it's very hard, it's really hard to be a diamond among, amongst a bunch of rhinestones. 
So when I, when I heard that, I said, that, that's pretty relatable. You know, we're all shiny, we all look great, but we have some real diamonds amongst us. And look around, it's all of you. Congratulations tonight on your accomplishments. Congratulations on being the best of, of the best of your programs. I truly commend you. I'm sure that you did not get here without the great work of our faculty, staff, your parents, those of you that have husbands and wives and supporters, your children, friends. Let's give them all a round of applause right now. I want to say that whatever, I, you know, listening to the stories tonight, I heard reasons why you started to come to Middlesex Community College. And I was thinking that whatever brought you through the door, whatever attracted you to our college, I know I'm sure glad that you came. Please come back. Please make sure that you stop by once in a while and let us know how you're doing. Follow up, say hi to your professors, say hi to me. Just come back and make sure that you continue to support Middlesex Community College in any way that you can, but mostly by just reflecting back on the wonderful times that you've had and the accomplishments that you've had. You all should be very, very proud of yourselves tonight. I know that everyone that presented your awards, you can, you can feel it, you can see it, and how proud they were of you. So be proud of yourselves as you walk out here today um, and continue on. It's not, it's not often that we get together on Friday nights, right? I mean, we look at each other around, how many Friday nights do we all get together? I think I saw some of you la a Thursday night at PTK, right, last week. We're gonna be here this Friday night, which is today. Next Friday night, I'm gonna see a lot of you at the scholarship night. And then we're gonna come back again on another Thursday night for commencement. These are all wonderful times at our college. I look forward to them. I am the last thing tonight between you and the food. So I'm not gonna keep going on too long. I know you're, you're all antsy, antsy and ready to go. But I conclude with the utmost heartfelt support and gratitude for getting to see each and one of you receive your award tonight. So thank you for sharing with me, all of you, my faculty, my staff, my fellow CEO, <laughs> for coming back tonight, and Donna Van Hattabas for your leadership and your excellence in, in academics. We truly, truly are glad to have you. On that note, we ask everyone to, Richard, are you gonna say anything back? Or am I? At this point, you guys, we have food in the back. I hope that you'll partake, stay with us, have a little uh, snack and nosh, and of course, get to know each other around the tables um, and your fellow colleagues. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>